Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are talking about acids and bases. Now, this is going to be a concept that's probably a little bit of a review to you because I know for a fact we talk about the pH scale in biology, but I do want you guys to understand that today we're talking about acids and bases in terms of chemistry, so in terms of hydrogen donors and hydrogen acceptors in a chemical reaction. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, what are acids and bases? Acids release hydrogen ions in water, and examples of this would be HCl, HClO3, H2SO4, okay? And of course, we should recognize that this SO4 and the ClO3, those are some of those polyatomic ions that we learned about back in our earlier units. A base releases hydroxide anions in water, and examples of that would be NaOH and KOH. And the reason I'm not telling you the names right now is because we're going to talk about namings in a few slides. Um, if you are interested in getting some extra help or some practice with these, you can watch these videos that are embedded in the slideshow that you have access to. But for our purposes, in terms of this video, we're just going to skip over them. So what is a Bronsted-Lowry acid? So in terms of the definition of Bronsted-Lowry, acids donate protons, okay? So those hydrogen cations, that positively charged hydrogen. So example here, we have NH3 plus HCl, that's that acid. It will yield NH4, which is ammonia, plus a chloride anion, okay? So this acid has donated its hydrogen to the NH3, and because this is the donor, it's donating the hydrogen, we know that it is the acid. A Bronsted-Lowry base will be the proton acceptor, so the hydrogen um, cation acceptor. So if it's going to be the one, the compound that accepts the hydrogen, so NH3 accepted it and became NH4, that's our indication that this is the base. Okay, so NH3 would be the Bronsted-Lowry base, and the HCl would be the acid. So some properties of acids we need to know, they're sour and sticky. So like a lemon, if you pop a lemon wedge in your mouth, you kind of have that pucker, um, they're sour. It reacts with metals. It is an electrolyte, which is basically an essential um, component in your body that helps our hormones and also maintain our homeostasis. It's got a pH less than seven, it's a proton donor, and it always leads to an increase of hydrogen cation concentration. So H plus concentration increases. Bases, they're bitter and slippery, so like soaps, they react with fats and oils. They're also electrolytes, and they have a pH greater than seven. These bases are proton acceptors, and they increase the hydroxide concentration in solution. So that OH cation, or anion is going to increase. So acids have more hydrogen plus, bases have more OH minus. Okay, now we're going to talk about rules for naming acids and bases. And again, there's a video embedded for extra help if you need it. So when we name acids, we have to first look and see if the acid contains oxygen, okay? So it's a binary acid if it has no oxygen. So like HCl, that would be an acid with no oxygen. And in that case, we would name it hydro, whatever um, the cation is, ic acid, okay? So in the example of... Um, HCl, hydro is the hydrogen, Cl is that second element, so it would be hydrochloric acid, okay? If it's an oxy acid with oxygen, you don't need the hydro in front, you just need to look at the polyatomic ion that it's associated with, and you change the ending to either us, so if it ends in I, it'll be changed to us acid, so O-U-S. If it ends in eight, it would be ic acid. So like, for example, like H2SO4. SO4 is sulfate. It's a polyatomic ion. And so we would say that is sulfuric acid, okay? Naming bases is going to be a lot easier. You just have the metal and then you 
you name you put the name in the metal and then it's hydroxide. So NaOH would be sodium hydroxide. Okay, and I would definitely recommend just having this in your notebook so that when you see an acid or a base, you can just use these rules to immediately name the acid or base. Okay. All right, so now that we've talked about acids and bases, let's talk about the indicators for these acids and bases. So how can we tell whether a substance is an acid or base? So there are some indicators that we can use. There's phenothalene, litmus paper, and universal pH paper. Phenothalene will turn colorless in the presence of an acid. Litmus paper will turn pink and universal indicators are red, orange, or yellow. Those are those like yellow papers that you dip into um, the solution and then you compare it to the number on the little card and typically they're red, orange, or yellow. For bases, phenothalene will turn pink Litmus paper will turn blue, and universal indicators will be blue or purple. Now, neutralization reactions can happen. This is when acid and bases react to produce a salt and water. Okay, so when acids and bases react together, you always get a salt and water. So here we have hydrochloric acid, and we have sodium hydroxide. They react to, to uh, produce sodium chloride, which is salt, and water, okay? And when you have a neutralization reaction, remember neutral on the pH scale is a seven. So what's happening is basically we're getting this reaction to bring the solution down to a seven or up to a seven, depending. When we talk about strong versus weak acids or bases, a strong is a complete dissociation. So it a, breaks apart. And if it's weak, it partially dissociates. So if we're talking about weak versus strong acids, a strong acid will have a lower pH and a, a weak acid would have a higher pH. A weak base would have a lower pH and a strong base would have a higher pH. So basically the extremes on each end, the lowest number will have the um, highest acidity and then the highest number will have the highest uh, base. And of course, we use pH to measure the potential of hydrogen, which is the just the hydrogen concentration to show how acidic or base it, it is. Seven is in the middle, it's neutral, okay? So we have this um, tap right here, typically distilled water, tap water is going to be seven neutral. Um, anything below a seven is gonna be acidic, so like coffee, tomatoes, lemons, battery acid. Anything above a seven is gonna be basic. So soap, bleach, etc. Okay. And these are pH and potential of hydrogen calculations. Um, I'm not gonna make you guys do calculations so we don't have to worry about that one, okay? So that was really quick, but that was the rundown and the nitty gritty of acids and bases. We are going to practice with naming some acids and bases. Um, in your study guide later on, but if you have any questions on anything, let me know, and if not, you guys are good to move on to your assignment for the day.